The short game is listener supported on Patreon. If you'd like to support the show and join us on our Discord, head to theshortgame.net or patreon.com slash the short game. Welcome back to The Short Game, the show about short video games, games that respect your time. I am Reagan Kelly, and I am joined this week by my bro host and one excellent guest. Yes, I am Shane Kelly, and we're joined by Rahul Rao, a local performance artist and an all-around cool guy. Hi, it's me. Uh, I'm an all-around cool guy. Thank you, Shane. (laughs) Welcome, Rahul. And uh, Rahul is here to help us talk about a game called The Forgotten City. So... I first heard about this from a PR email that I got to the show account, but I I, uh, I think this has flown under a lot of radars. So I wanted to know where you guys first saw about this game, uh, because this has a really, really interesting history, uh, but I didn't know about it. I think I'd vaguely seen something about this game's original version back in like 2016, but like it had it'd been a while. How did you guys find out about this game? Um, well, so... I think uh, I think I was actually the one that told Shane about it. Um, yeah, you were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I I was aware of the Skyrim mod, uh, which is wild to think of now after playing this game that this was simply a Skyrim mod for what is essentially like a if you really want to play and unlock everything a forty to fifty hour game in a in a mod that you could just download for free. Wow, I don't know. I don't know how you'd get forty or fifty hours out of this. I think I spent seven or eight, and I'm pretty sure I did everything. Oh, like not wow. everything, everything, really? but like, like pretty close. Like, I, I, I got uh, two of the four endings. We'll talk about those in a little bit. And uh, I mean, you know, this is the short game. Like, I'm pretty sure this is a this is a short game. Dang, like this, yeah. You could you could do you could do everything there is to do in this game in ten hours mm-hmm. or maybe twelve if you're really. I will it. say it seems like the mod had a lot going on. I I did a little research into the mod itself, and there was a lot of like, Wait, like items okay, you could collect ba- and stuff. Back up a step. Back up a step. We're talking about the mod. We haven't talked about what this game is. I want to yeah. explain it a little bit, but uh, feel free to jump yeah, in. If please you- do. What is the Forgotten City? The Forgotten City is a game uh, set in ancient Rome, or sort of. Uh, It is a first-person adventure game, uh, and uh, it's based on a a Skyrim mod, more on that in a second, but that's sort of an interesting history side of it. But the game that we played today is an independent game, totally separate from its roots as an original Skyrim mod, um, with new settings, new characters, um, similar setting and plot, but reworked. Um, So way back in 2016... The creators of this game created a mod for Skyrim that if you think back on Skyrim, right, Skyrim uh, takes place in this, you know, Cyrodiil world where the the uh, the dwarves, uh, the, I forget, do they call them dwarves? Oh, uh, no, Dwemer they're, the, the they're the Dwemer. And, yeah, yeah. Yep. So in, in Skyrim, you're constantly uh, wandering into Dwemer ruins, right? And the Dwemer ruins are these like high technology golden ruins or, you know, high technology for compared to the rest of Skyrim, right? Uh, full of, you know, dead dwarves and, and cobwebs, right? And weird automatons, a lot of stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. fight you. Yeah, so it always left you with the questions like, well, what were these Dwemer like? They're gone. And, uh, and you know, the, the game never answers that question. So a bunch of modders came in and made a mod that let you use time travel and also a cool time looping Groundhog Day mechanic, which we'll talk about in some detail here, um, to meet the Dwemer, right? It was, the, the mod was like, go back in time and see a Dwemer city at its height. But don't just travel back in time. Uh, you ha- it has this very complex little puzzle plot uh, about getting stuck in a Groundhog Day time loop where you are uh, the, the city... Uh, and I'm speaking about both these. I have only played the uh, the new game. We'll talk about the distinction between the original mod and the new sure. game in a second. But uh, both of them, the the idea is that you're stumbling into a a city where everyone is in terror of committing a sin, and uh, because there's a golden rule in the city that if anyone commits a sin in this city, then they will all be killed by being turned into gold. Um, and uh, that's why this this whole city is like littered with golden statues. The many shall suffer the sins of the one. <laughs> my my favorite line about this was when they were rolling this out in the story when they're introducing this. It, it describes it as like the 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 curse of Medusa and Midas in one. <laughs> 
And uh, <laughs> I mean, which which hits for me. That's a hundred percent. The the for me, it's so bizarre to imagine this story without the Roman kind of structure to it without this kind of yeah because it's it's such a good fit i mean it's clear that they've essentially rewritten this from scratch the entire plot is like it it, all the writing references uh the roman world and roman gods and philosophy and in fact this is a very philosophical game there's a a ton Mm -hmm. Of the of the discussion and talk in the game re- revolves around the question of well what is sin? We know there will be this you know the ideas of sin, ideas of collective punishment, like right and wrong, all of that within the context of ancient philosophy. It's it's the writing is so fun in this game. Yeah, and and the the original mod was uh, as far as I mean, one of the things that they say about it is that it was one of the first mods for a game to win a national writing award i tried to look that up to see like what national writing award and you know what were the details there and i I couldn't find it quickly enough to 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 say that here i'll see if i can later but um that's really impressive like you know obviously these folks who made this mod for zero dollars on zero budget as a hobby project really had some great ideas about uh narrative in this structure being able to tell an interesting story with good writing in a structure that is essentially just the same sort of nested quest log structure that you get with standard Skyrim style uh, quests, but with this very nice restricted, you know, you're trapped in a sort of a underground city kind of kind of vibe. I, I think it's really, really cool that they took apparently years and years from 2016 to today uh, to take this idea that clearly they knew worked, right? They knew this, this way of telling a story, this kind of setting, uh, you know, a lot of about uh, stuff about this original mod really, really worked, but they, you know, they wanted to make this its own thing. And so they didn't just like file the names off and call the Dwemer, you know, the Dwarvers or something. They did an entire rework to set this in a totally new setting in the quote unquote real world, because they're, they're dealing with real world cultures with like ancient, uh, ancient Rome and, and some others that come up later in the story too. And the, the the idea that they they took this this mod and created this out of it is really really impressive to me and i i i think you know we'll we'll talk about, like i i love time loop games i love time loops as a mechanic and anytime a game has a time loop you know sort of a groundhog day style mechanic um i'm always super interested in covering it some ones that we've covered on the show that i've really really loved like I was, I was, I mean, you've heard me talk a zillion times about how Outer Wilds was like one of my favorite <laughs> yeah. games of all time. Um, this doesn't quite stand with Outer Wilds, but it's not that far off. This, these guys knew how to deploy this mechanic and narrative like really, really well. Did you, uh, did you ever play the Sexy Brutal? Oh my God. Yes. I, was exa- I was about to mention the Sexy Brutal. The Sexy Brutal uh, came out in like 2017. And it was like one of my favorite games that we've done for the show. Yeah, this is this game is probably the closest to me to like that game. It, it just feels in more so in the lane of like murder mystery than maybe other time loop games are, which is very cool. Yeah, that is the thing that's really interesting about it is that you are well, OK, so when you start the game, uh, you are standing on the banks of a river uh, and you're uh, the Tiber. And you're next to an abandoned, obviously, uh, ancient Roman shrine, a pretty small little structure that's like partially falling down, standing by the banks of the Tiber. And there's a woman there telling you that her friend, Al, just went in and she can't, uh, she, you know, he, she thinks he may be trapped inside. He hasn't come out and she's been expecting him uh, and she's worried that he might be injured in there, but she can't go in after him herself. Um, for reasons that I've forgotten now, made it, made her promise to stay by the boat or something like that. And uh, so she asks you to go in, and you do. And when you do, you fall through the floor of this uh, of this structure. I, I have to say first here, her her request uh, this this was to me not a crazy strong start because right. she's literally like uh, it, first up, it's it's it feels quite contrived it's the like you've forgotten Mm. everything trope in video games and and then 
um, she's like, hey, I just, you you drowned in this river, and I saved your life. I have resuscitated you minutes ago. Hey, could you go on a quest for me while I wait here? Uh, <laughs> I'm like, it, no, I, I agree. <laughs> this game has, like, uh, so I could say, like, without going into spoiler territory um this game has reasons for everything that it does and it's so this thoughtful, initial but it feels it like it feels like a very skyrim like hey traveler kind of quest yeah the uh that intro is very it, it doesn't i i would i would definitely agree with you that it doesn't really represent the whole game but also there are some very strange role playing elements at the beginning that do not really matter <laughs> throughout the rest of the game oh yeah you're talking about the thing where it has you like pick a background yeah they it just doesn't matter one of them gives you like a weapon to start with but i don't i don't even know if it really like there's any point to any of any of that yeah i wouldn't say it's a strong start i chose the archaeologist one and it, it just made, meant that there were like a handful of things that i could have that i could read in the game that i couldn't have otherwise read um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty minimal. I don't think it, it's. Uh, I don't think there's much to that. Uh, it yeah, does let I you pick one, a gender. One which hilarious is nice. one is that when you pick the archaeologist, uh, it gives you a lot more detail on the bathroom habits of ancient Romans. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the way they wipe their ass with a rag on a stick um, or a sponge yep. on a stick, I think. But the uh, if I were to play the game again, and for our listeners, I would probably consider the background that says you're like a thief or something because that one says. Uh, you walk and run 25% faster. Uh, oh. Nothing that any oh. of the others... Um, I would have liked to of, have that. Yeah, that's the one I would pick if I were if I were to play uh, to play this again. Uh, th- nothing... I-, I was very tempted by the archaeologist one because I was like, well, I want to read all the flavor text on everything. Trust me, like, you can... Y- you won't miss... Uh, You'll figure it out. Very much at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I- I- that's the one I would choose. But yeah, it is nice that you can kind of pick a man or a woman. Um, but none of that really matters that much um, once you fall in the giant weird hole. <laughs> it is perhaps some of the most meaningless character creation that has ever been in a video game. Like it, yeah. it is completely and utterly pointless. Like it's it's so mm-hmm. weird. It's so weird. Mm-hmm. And yet uh, that might be the only like negative thing i have to say about this game all things considered is that ending is just not strong but by the by the or that not excuse me that beginning is just not strong but by the time you get to the end it's you have been just suckered in to just like sticking yeah. with all these characters it's tough because it really like having seen the endings i can't talk about this pre post you know before until we get to the spoiler break we will do a spoiler break and talk about the endings um for folks who are interested in in the spoilery stuff um but th- this beginning of the game was so not strong that like so i get a lot of pitch emails from various pr people right and um sometimes they are pretty aggressive about wanting to hand out keys to games i'm not saying this as like a as like a flex or anything we actually you know we're 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 real small time compared to most podcasts in this space (laughs) but but occasionally i do get these like very very aggressive uh pitch emails uh from folks who really want us to play something that doesn't seem like it's particularly polished or particularly for us right Reagan, when you say aggressive, it makes it sound like you're getting cyber bullied. And I just want you to know this is a safe space and you can tell me anything. Yes. Well, um, these these uh, PR people, uh, sometimes they really <laughs> um, bother me. Show me on the doll where the PR person uh, gave you a code to play their game. For free. <laughs> Give me a code, a free code to play their game. <laughs> cyber bullying. Um, so I, I, I play this game because uh, I, I booted this up because I got a, a PR email from these folks. Um, and, uh, it, the art did not particularly inspire me. Right. But the idea that a Ooh, game it, had it, been, uh, yeah, it's, that some art of it's okay is, I mean, it, it's, it's fine. You, I'm not, I don't want to give these guys uh, any flack because like they, they did go from, you know, from nothing to a full ass video game ass game with a bunch of really nice custom assets, um, but like, there's a lot of stuff about the first impressions of the art, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're doing this very realistic style yeah. and, uh, with a small team and doing a very realistic style with a small team means certain things like 
eyes and teeth are going to look weird, Listen, right? Listen, you can 100% tell that this is a Skyrim mod the moment you open up this regular game. Like, Yeah, and, and <laughs> it's not running in the Skyrim engine. It, they've, they've, they've done this all in uh, the Unreal Engine. Yeah. So, like, they, they had to, like, re-sky, re-implement a lot of Skyrim-ass shit uh, in Unreal in order to make this game. It looks fine. Most of the time, like, looking at the things that you really want to look at, things like the environments... And the architecture, yeah, those and are the beautiful. objects in houses, all beautiful. And even the faces are fine. It, it's just some of them are a little unsettling. Especially, this is where it's another like foot forward kind of thing. Especially that stranger you meet on the bank for whatever reason, she's like the most unsettling character, second most unsettling character model in the game. The, the most unsettling is the woman who you the save baker. from being crushed. The baker, by- yeah, the baker. Oh my <laughs> yes. god, what's wrong with her face? Uh, <laughs> did Fabia? Did, um, did her face get yeah, baked? Yeah, Fabia. <laughs> uh, just it did not get baked enough. Is the problem? Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, like it. Again, not not best foot forward here. Yeah, but here, let me stop for a second and, and say, like, what this game nails with the characters is there's really good voice acting. and it's Really good. Voiced. It's so great. And, yeah, it's a great cast. And, like, like especially... And a large cast. There's, like, that, 20 like, characters in this. Yeah, there's a ton. And, and you... Uh, and some of these characters, you're going to hear the same dialogue from them over and over again as time loops. So that really matters. Like if I had been just reading this game, if it weren't for- fully voiced with a great cast, uh, it would have been a huge. It would been it, it would be nowhere near as engrossing as it actually was. Um, so really, really cool. So I we talked about the sort of way in just to kind of finish the initial like how do you get into this place to can continue the conversation? You fall into this hole. In the hole is the the city, the abandoned city, but it's it's the the ruined version. You land in right? a big bathtub. Yeah, the uh, you you fall into the the ruined version of this underground hidden Roman city, and your first thought is, why is there a Roman city underground? How would the Romans have even built this? The game will try to answer those questions for you at some point, um, but it's very mysterious and also mysterious throughout this entire city. There are golden statues standing everywhere and not the sort of standard Roman statue, but like very realistic statues of people in poses of terror and distress. Weird. And then you find the guy that you went in to find, right? You were going into this place to find somebody who presumably just went in there named Al and you find him also as a golden statue, but a golden statue hanging by the neck. He is committed suicide and is has been turned into gold. And there's a little note from him telling him, telling you traveler or whoever, don't go into that portal. (laughs) Don't go into the portal. Uh, Better to kill yourself than to go into the portal. Like I did. And what do we do? We go into the portal. I know we just spent like five minutes talking about how butt cheeks this beginning is, but I have to tell you (laughs) when that happened and like the other foot dropped just on that moment right there, uh, that was definitely like, oh, this game is about to be way cooler than I expect it to be. <laughs> just with the setup for that, too. Like, the way that the shot, just if you're looking at it from, like, a film perspective, the way that you discover his body and, like, your eye is naturally drawn to it. And it's just, womp, right there across the fucking canyon. And then you go around mm-hmm. to it and then you see it in all of its, like, disgusting golden... This is a dead person who hung himself. Yeah, on. and you 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 immediately see like he's not wearing Roman garb, right? Yeah, something very unsettling about the fact that he's wearing like jeans. Yep, and he's he's turned into gold as well. So we proceed through the portal, of course, and we emerge in the past. I think this is where we need to start talking about how the structure of this time loop works, because you know you emerge in the past yep. and you are in this ancient Roman city. It's a fairly small city. It's basically three villas, a couple of temples, a small market square, and a tiny little farm. And that's about it. At the highest, there's this gigantic temple. Yeah, so there's a little hole to let the sunlight in, but it's this tiny little cave, and you're clearly trapped in here. Yeah, the the city itself, uh, Rahul, you, you said like the design was kind of filmic. That the, the whole place is really uh, well staged, like... All the sight lines are great. From where you start, you're kind of kind of midway up, and there, so there's uh, you can see down into the cavern, and you can see up into the heights, 
And you basically coming out of this small temple that you start in, which is the temple of Proserpina, uh, you can see the entire city. If you kind of look down to your left, you see the slums where everyone, uh, where nearly everyone lives. You look to your right, you see the villas. You look kind of up and to the left, you see the, like, uh, the forum area. And then way up high in the, the, the bright light from, um, from the whole kind of, opening to the sky that you can see uh you can see this lofty roman style temple that's way up on a hill uh, apart from everything mm-hmm. else and it pretty much tells you everything you need to know about the city and it's um it, as a as a place almost everywhere you go like the level design um is this is a place you're going to re-explore over and over again they make it fairly easy to get around and they, they take some extra steps to make it easier to get around a little quicker. Like, um, one of these uh, characters, zip invents, lines. Uh, yeah. zip line, <laughs> um, which is yep. excellent. Um, yeah, uh, uh, there is something very cool about, uh, and I mean, I realize the small scale of this game, but like having the ability to have a game world where you can look at, anything and go to it it's pretty impressive all things considered uh for such a small world and yeah i mean if the entire place is designed around exploration then yeah it behooves the designers to allow you to get across the world faster especially with the nature of the time and time loop too because like there's another the other part about that is that you only get one day like majora's mask style you only get mm-hmm. uh, an entire like not even full 24 hour period to stop everything from happening before it's something fucks it up again so you get a quest log and this is the thing to think that like it most inherited from skyrim is the the structure of its quest log mm-hmm. if you remember like um uh, like it's been years i, I think i played skyrim in like 20 20- what was it? 13, 14, something like that. Yeah. Um, so did everyone, man. Like it was yeah, so yeah. hot, dude. Yeah, man. And I think this, this mod actually came out in Reagan, like 2016. If you want to feel so. old, I'd like to tell you that it was 2011. Oh, Jesus God. Oh my God. I think I didn't play it until I built a gaming PC in 2013 though. So like that, that oh, might, mm. I played it day one. Oh man. Oh man. But like, uh, this game, this, uh, this game's, original like Skyrim mod version didn't come out until after I'd already played Skyrim, which is why I don't think I ever played the mod. Um, but like the, it's definitely inherited something about its quest log system from Skyrim. If you remember back in Skyrim, like you have these big headline quests that would be something like, I don't know, join the, or become a master thief or something like that. Right. Join the thieves guild or investigate the mystery of the whatever. Right. And then it would have these nested quests within that as you discovered new um, opportunities or leads within that. And it would it had a kind of a, like um, a outline view kind of style to its quest log. And this has that, too. So you get some big top line quests right off the bat. Um, and I think the quest log here is a very successful implementation of this. It's really well designed from like a narrative and gameplay perspective, like your your big headline op, uh, quests are you want to get back to your own time and you learn very quickly uh, that you're probably your best way to do that is going to be to create a time paradox, because if you can create a situation where you were where the event that drew you here uh, never occurs, then you will get shunted back to your own time. But there's also uh, what are the other big top line quests? There's like um, discover the what well, the meaning of the golden rule or or the like what the cause yeah, is or whatever. Uh, the the major major one that you get from Galerius, who's the mayor. Uh, the major one is figuring out who's. Uh, go- uh, Galerius is your buddy who runs around as your gopher. Oh, never mind. Sen- Sentius, the mayor. There you go. Or yeah. the the magistrate. Yeah. Oh. Sh- you know, maybe perhaps I'm revealing spoilers too soon, I guess. Uh, mm. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the magistrate, uh, the big quest up top is just like, who is going to break the golden rule? Right. Um, however, yeah. what, I, what I find very interesting about this game, and I think one of the reasons why it's so great yet again, you, while you may figure out who breaks the golden rule one time, uh, it doesn't 
affect the fact that potentially someone else might break the golden rule in some other way and like things still or you might yeah <laughs> just you it, it might be you doing something that you didn't think that you were trying to do like i had a moment where i accidentally uh i made someone mad at me and i tried to talk to them again and i accidentally just stole some stuff off of their desk and <laughs> immediately that was okay that that happened for me too. Was that the first time that you saw the golden rule broken? No, the first time I saw the golden rule broken was when uh I guess I don't know if this is spoilery, but when uh that assassin comes to the city. Oh yeah. That's a really good one. Yeah, no, for me, the first time that I broke the golden rule was like I literally just like wandered into Sentius's mansion, right? Um, had a conversation with Sentius about the golden rule. He told me, like, okay, go investigate. Uh, you know, the 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 you know, so it, in case we didn't fully explain it at the top, this this city is living under a uh, a tyrannical curse of the gods, presumably, where if anyone commits any sin, what counts as a sin? Question marks. A lot of discussion on that point. Exactly. Then the entire city will be turned into gold, Midas style. Um, and we know this has happened before because there's tons and tons of previous generations of people who've lived here um it apparently the, this has been happening in cycles where a bunch of people find their way into this city they become trapped here they have to figure out a way to live uh and um eventually one of them screws up these folks have been here for six months and uh the uh the the magistrate tells you that he thinks that the golden rule is about to be broken and that it's his job to stop it. And so he sort of deputizes you to figure out who it is that is about to break the golden rule. How does he know it's about to be broken? Question marks. Um, but he also uh, tells you that he has learned a from the gods a uh, a ritual that will cause a time loop. Um, and so it, it because he knows he's the one who brought you here from the future. And he says that if the golden rule is going to be broken, if it is broken, he is going to reset the day, open the basically. open the time portal so that uh, but it uh, that this ritual kills him. So he yeah. will die. But the uh, but you will be able to run through the time portal and, and uh, escape and reset the day. So, um, yeah, that so he's what I thought about at this point in the game. Like, so we've just had we've just had the. The, the stranger on the banks of the river. Uh, we've run into Al's corpse. Uh, we met Galerius and followed Galerius up to Sentius. And then we get Sentius. This whole stretch of the game is an intense info dump. Um, really but is. the interesting thing here, it really is. Like there's a lot. Uh, but one of the things that they do very well here, um, following Galerius, totally optional. Of course, I did follow Galerius because I was like, okay, well, yeah, tell me the what first you to time the you're incentivized to follow Galerius because you don't know what mm -hmm. the fuck is going on. Right. You know, what else are you going to do? Wander. Um, and then you meet, you meet Sentius, but it explicitly tells you when you start having this conversation with Sentius, it says the, these questions will be available to you later. Right. And this is mm -hmm. something that the game continues to do in the structure of its dialogue and like the way its quests work is it there are explicit messages from the writers to you uh, saying like, hey, don't worry about this or alternatively, like be aware of that. Right. Um, I know we in the kind of pre-show, we talked a little bit about some kind of built in content warnings that are applied at, before you start certain quests. I don't know if you want to talk about any of that, but uh, yeah, not to, not to get into spoiler territory for that. But like, yeah, that, I really appreciated that. Um, and also it kind of exciting too, because like it will tell you like, you know, it, uh, if you choose this option and where you might be in conversation with a character and there will be a, a, a part of that conversation menu screen, we'll just say like uh, simple stuff. Like if you choose this option, it will change what quest you have selected in your log, right? It will begin showing the, uh, the, um, uh, the quest markers for this particular quest, which sometimes is very convenient. But before you start certain quests, it'll say, you know, you, if you are not interested in uh, in a, a quest with action or horror elements, perhaps you want to skip this one or something like that. I, I think um, you should also put action or horror elements in very open quotes on that. 
<laughs> yes, but that's, I think that's how they phrased it. And it's, you know, it, it was valuable because, like, first of all, that prepared me for the fact that, like, I was about to start a quest that was going to be more involved than the sort of walking around and talking to people that yep. makes up the majority of the game. Um, so, you know, that that told me, like, hey, maybe I don't want to start that quest at 1 a.m., <laughs> you know? Um, but other folks might want that as a content warming morning. Maybe they don't want the horror portion of the game. Um Sure. But yeah, it's it's really, really, really well designed. The the dialogue system, like Shane mentioned, initially like struck me as kind of old fashioned because it does the Skyrim thing where like when you begin talking to a character, the camera zooms in uncomfortably close to their face. <laughs> yeah. And uh and gives you the like dialogue options in a sort of a, like a hovering panel to their yep. to their side um and it initially struck me as like a little old-fashioned but it's extremely well done um like i i thought it's really taking a lot of inspiration yeah. from modern dialogue systems and um even like interactive fiction yep. and it's it's like it it will show you which dialogue options you've chosen before so you don't have to sit through text that you've you know you've seen before even if it happened in previous loops um, and, uh, you know, so it makes it easy to see if there's something new available that you can say to a character that you weren't able to, or that, you know, uh, conversational options that you couldn't have previously chosen based on new information you have. Um, and then the quest system also tracks all of this information for you. So anytime a character mentions something that might be relevant to a quest, it becomes part of your quest log as part of a leads section to the quest log uh, where you can see all of the leads you have which gives you a really easy way to say like okay if i've just just come into you know repetition nine of this day well what should i you know what part of the walls should i be scratching on right like what do i try next and it the game always has an answer for you like it always has a this reminded me a little bit of uh of outer wilds because that game has that sort of resetting but it has a really really good interface for managing your you know what information do i have and what spaces do i have left to explore and this does that too even though it's using this sort of very skyrim ass system it's using it really really well to like lead you down the interesting paths even if you maybe haven't thought about them in a little while like you know you have a place to go look for what was i thinking about or trying last did you guys uh, ever use in the game the uh, butterfly trail that you can just uh, press a button for, and you can just it'll just hot key you to whatever. <clears throat> so objective. I think that was broken for me because I I it know work that on the, all the quests. Yeah, I, I know it was it, only works on it was an option, right? But you um, when you select a quest in the menus, you get that little like flag or like waypoint marker where you can see also very Skyrim style like what direction a particular objective is in and how far away it is. Sure. And that was all I ever needed. I didn't need the butterflies, but I'm I know that exists, but I couldn't make it work from a controller. I, I played a lot of this game with a controller because I was playing it on my TV. Um, um yeah, so I I played it with a PS4 controller attached to a computer. But uh I I'm unsure of the butterflies as well. They didn't really they didn't, didn't really work up. for me. It I, was mentioned and it didn't it didn't happen. Like this tells you what button to hit so, to do it and it didn't show up for me. I, I, I can why. tell you what's going on there. It, it only it only will give that to you if the objective that you, so two things have to be have to be true there. One, in the list of quests, there is a little eye icon that you can click next to the quest and so that has to be selected. I don't know what I don't know what to do. <laughs> why you can select a quest and not have it the eye icon marked because it doesn't really do anything in many cases. Yeah, it's like a distinction um, between like viewing a quest and like right. making it active as your as your Yeah, and then the second thing is many of the quests because this is an investigation game um don't have a specific place that they're asking you to go. They're yeah. asking you to explore and find something out. And so in that case you can't really you can't really do it. You will see the butterflies as a hint on certain items in the world. Oh yeah, stuff you can uh, interact with. Yeah, well, interact with in a particular way. So if you're starting the game and you're seeing those butterflies, uh, you'll know when you have the tools to interact with the things that the butterflies are used with. Uh, when they're floating on next to plants. Yeah, it, it's a mystery at the beginning. So an example of this would be, and it's mostly plants. An example of this is like, you can go up to and like investigate those items and it'll tell you like, you'll see some vines with little butterflies around it. And if you go and like hit A on it, it'll say, uh, uh, it, you could climb this if it would support your weight. And that's all you get. And at the beginning of the game, I was like, well, how am I supposed to make these plants support my weight? And 
you you'll discover a way to do that um but that is spoiler territory again but uh, lose really interesting weight. stuff yeah yes <laughs> the quest line to lose some weight <laughs> uh, but yeah that's uh uh, that's all you get in terms of those sort of like hints. Um, but the, the quest log is, I think, just like extremely well deployed, like really well, well written quest descriptions that I have you know, one it, issue with it. Oh. Um, and and that is um, it's not really with the quest or, or with it. We, we're praising the quest. And we're pra- quest. We're praising the dialogue system. I, I, I applaud all that. Um, I had one really annoying issue with the dialogue on one particular quest. And it's a quest that asks you to. Um, essentially interview everybody about how they got to the city, right? And mm. I won't get into the details of like the why behind that or anything on the quest, but um, that quest asks you to go around and interview people about how they got to the city and then report back to uh, one of the kind of key story characters who is a Vestal Virgin priestess. Um, and I did that. I talked to basically everybody. I, I wandered around and I, I, I couldn't. I was like, I must have missed somebody. I just must have missed somebody. Uh, you don't even actually have to talk to everybody. You just have to talk to enough people to identify uh, like certain through lines in the stories. And then you have to go back and trigger uh, a dialogue option with her. And the problem was the way that the dialogue works. If you have heard a piece of dialogue before then it will be li- it will be kind of dark gray. And if you've not heard a piece of dialogue before, it'll be white. So I went back to her. All of her dialogue options are gray. I clearly I have heard everything. I I think well I must not have ah uh, yeah found I see what, you're what I about. needed yeah. mm-hmm. right. I must not have I must not have learned the the thing I needed to continue this quest line. So I'd like go talk to a few more people. I, I was at I was at the point where I'd, I'm pretty sure I've talked to everybody. I'd come back to her. At this point, I've talked to literally everybody in the town multiple times, many of them. And it turns out that behind one of those grayed out text options uh, was a new dialogue option that was like two levels deep in the conversation tree (laughs) that wasn't there the first time I talked to her and now was there and was what I needed to trigger to proceed. So what's what's interesting, Shane, is that I literally went through more or less the exact same thing. I didn't find everyone in the city, but I just got super fed up with her and I just went through the text box again, only to find that there was a option that I could take. And I, yeah, yeah, I don't think that was properly uh, indicated in any way. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I I think that is something like UI wise they could improve. Mm -hmm. Like if there is new options buried underneath something you've already seen, it would be nice for that to be highlighted maybe in a different way from a totally new option or Mm -hmm. something. That's a nitpick. Um, I'll say it. It's a a nitpick. I didn't run into that as an issue, mainly because I guess probably just the order in which I tried things. I happened to try that conversation option a little later than you did. And so by that point, I had collected enough information. So um, yeah, that is that is probably one quirk about the the dialogue thing that could possibly be improved but i i'll say like for a game where you're going to be having the same conversations a lot this has really done a pretty good job um oh yeah, part, yeah. so one last thing i wanted to t- talk about before we uh before we start moving on towards spoiler territory was how the game uh, does really clever things to allow you to not do busy work in a game that is all about doing the same thing over and over again. Ah, uh, Galerius. Yeah, Galerius specifically. Ooh, so the um, man. this is something that like I've thought about a lot because like we've talked about we never did an episode on it, but we've talked about games like um Hadean Lands. Shane, did you ever try Hadean Lands? I watched a little bit of you and Laura playing Hadean Lands. Um I, I was pretty intrigued by it, but uh yeah it's not it was a pretty dense game. Yeah, Hadean Lands is a game by Andrew Plotkin. Uh, it's a, uh, a really intricate interactive fiction text-based game that is also set in a time loop where you're on a spaceship uh, and you're like a wizard and uh, you have to learn a bunch of spells. Um, and the spells often have components that rely on creating components with other spells. So the the thing about that game that was really, really brilliant is that you might have like a solution to a puzzle might require doing 30 or 40 things uh, oh. in order to kind of build up from first principles to having all of the magical tools and equipment and spell uh, components and everything that you need. But the game keeps track of what you've learned. And so, you know, you might, when you first start that game, you might be doing something like, 
uh, you know, you might need to uh, open a particular door. And, you know, you know, by having played that game a ton, you know that in order to open that door, I first need to go to a different room, get these three spell ingredients, combine them in a go to a different room, use a particular piece of magical equipment to combine them, take that and go to a different room and do a particular thing there and blah, 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 until finally I've created a magical key or something like that basic example. Um, but that game is very, very clever where you go up to that door, you say open door. And if you've done it before, it will tell you, okay, you go to the first room, you pick up these ingredients, you go to the second room, you do this, then you go back to the room, you create the key, you go to the door, unlock the door. So you tell it open door and it does 30 things for you. Um, this game isn't quite that smart, but it's almost as smart as that. And it does it all just with one really, really aggressive dude who just can run really fast. Yep. And it, that's can, Galerius. Can I, uh, can I throw one more thing in here since we're talking about – we brought up Andrew Plotkin and we're talking about games that have a time loop. Yes. One of the very first indie games of any kind that I played – was from like way back in like the the late nineties. I'm sure I played it in maybe the early two thousands or something. Uh, Spider and Web by Andrew Plotkin, which oh wow, that game was great. Is it to me that was like structurally it was one of the most interesting little time loop games I've ever played. So in that game, uh, you start off as kind of a. It's like okay, you're like a tourist. You've wandered into a blind alley. Uh, you look around. You start walking out of the alley. Um, and then you are, uh, confronted by kind of a, a sneering voice that says, Hey, uh, you're lying. And if you keep lying, I'm going to torture you. Uh, what did you really do? And so the structure of the game is you're gradually piecing together that, uh, your main character is a spy who is being interrogated about how he broke into this secure facility. And so every, every time you're playing through, the the sequence of the game and maybe getting a little bit farther it's actually reve- you revealing through interrogation uh how you actually broke into this building which i just love that i think it's an all-star uh fabulous game I, and if anyone who's listening to this hasn't played that um you absolutely should go and and, and download it i think it's on the uh, if archive or whatever that's like the uh the Prince of Persia games where uh, <laughs> you will be narrating your own story. And when you die, it'll be like, no, 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 that's not how it happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is, this has been the Andrew Plotkin is a genius uh, corner of the, uh, of the, of the show. So thank you for, Happy to have for, uh, yes, indeed. But the, where it relates to this game is that they do all they do that that same thing that I think is very important in time loop games, which is like I have figured out how to do a thing, Shortcut. but I don't want to do it every time. And the way they do that in this game is the first person you meet is the <laughs> is the, the kindest and fastest running dude you'll ever see. He's the number one walk up, boy, best boy, he, Galerius. He is the best boy, Galerius, best and that's bald, that's why bad like. Boy. <laughs> I, I, I'm really glad he is a really he's a great character. Um, you get to do some really great stuff, like solve his problems for him. And those are wonderful, too. But oh, so like nice. the first thing you do you know, on a on a repeat of a time loop is like, let's say that the last time you went through this whole process, you figured out uh, I'm going to come up with a, a false example so I don't spoil anything. But let's say that you you figured out that someone is going to drown in the well. And the best way to prevent them from drowning in the well is to put some boards over the well and then warn everyone not to to walk onto the well, right? Maybe if that were a thing in this game. Uh, so when you come into the, the game, maybe you don't want to go running around trying to board up the well before somebody falls down the well and drowns. And instead, you uh, you tell Galerius, Galerius, you know, he, you walk out of the, the Temple of Proserpina. It's the first time you've ever seen he's him like, or hey, he's ever stranger. seen you. Hey, stranger, and you can say to him, you know, uh, we've... Uh, hey, I need you to, you to do all the things, like, please. Here's a checklist. Galerius, <laughs> we've never met before, but it's very important that you do these 30 things. And he says, wow, sounds important. And he goes sprinting off <laughs> and goes and does it. And one of the most fun things to do it's in this game It's kind of was- hilarious to watch him. You could just follow him and as he runs around and does everything, and it's just like... <laughs> He's like, no time to explain. Take this. And he just runs. To I love that. I love it. It's so fun. If once you sort of, 
programmed Galerius to be the everyone's problems solver guy. <laughs> you you can then just watch him sprint around if you want, uh, talking to everyone and solving everyone's problems, you know, fixing everyone's lives in in minutes. I love it. And then my favorite thing about that is that then they incorporate that into a, a significantly important quest. I don't think this is going to be a this is a minor spoiler. Um, so uh, because it but it's it, I think it's worth the worth the spoiler the pre spoiler moment here. Which Galerius is that, can become the mayor. Galerius can become the can. mayor. I'll say it. Yeah, I'll yeah. say it. So very, exactly it's like you know that one of the things that's an important part of the the story here is that this is the day of the election <laughs> to see who's going to be the next magistrate or if Sentius is going to keep the job. Uh, and one of the things you can do is because Galerius spends the morning solving everyone's problems, he can go from being the farmer uh, to being the the <laughs> magistrate in a single day because you've just told him how to fix all the problems in town. I love that so much. <laughs> it's so funny and goofy, so but it also is like super functional and useful. It's brilliant. It's so brilliant. Absolutely. <laughs> So I think that's pretty much all we can talk about without stepping on spoilers. This game is it's a mystery game. And so there's a lot of really, really cool stuff that I can't talk about without doing a spoiler break first. So um, first of all, before we go that direction, uh, just any any last thoughts about the game that aren't spoilery? I mean, my, my quick hit is like I I loved it. I really, really recommend folks check it out. I, but if anybody has anything else to say, um, yeah, yeah, dude, it is uh, outside of the mod. The actual Forgotten City game itself—it's cheap. You can get the DLC for it. It's good. Uh, all of it costs. Wait, like, there's, there's DLC for this? Yeah, apparently I bought it on Steam. Uh, but there is like apparently some DLC. I don't know how accurate it is. Let me look it up right now. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Forgotten City. Oh, I just found that. I'm clicking on it. What is this? What is it? Oh, it's just like a it's like a digital collector's edition. So it's got like it's got like a like a a printable map. Oh, that looks fucking great. That's a really cool map. Yeah, um, I was gonna say that. Yeah, I I picked that up and I picked up the game at thirty bucks. To you, <laughs> like, <laughs> or it, you can get a three D printable Sentius statue. <laughs> that's kind of cool hey uh anybody got a resin 3d printer i want to print me out a sentius i'm uh that's pretty pretty cool i have access to a resin I... 3d printer and i'm gonna print me out a sentius <laughs> damn awesome. dude uh i cool. uh i had one and i literally just gave it away uh to to a friend uh but this map does look sweet honestly i kind of wish i'd had that it would have been very useful when i was starting the game yeah, and uh, also comes with a digital soundtrack as part of that collector's edition. Nice. Uh, Twenty four ninety nine for the the game on Steam and thirty one something for the digital collector's edition. If you yeah, those it's it's totally fucking worth it. If uh, if you haven't already, if you're not already into it by now, just buy the fucking game, dude. It, it'll go on sale, but just buy it now. Support these people, man. Totally. And um, this is also out on Windows exclusively at this point um they have in the materials they were sending around the marketing stuff it's clear they are planning console versions of this game so if you don't have access to a windows pc um you know sit tight this will probably be coming to an xbox slash playstation near you pretty soon um and i'm sure it'll be just fine on those platforms i played all this game with a controller uh, on my tv just playing off of my gaming pc and it was it was perfectly fine and good um so you know I, I think you'll you'll see that happen pretty soon here but right now this is just on uh steam for windows i think it might also be on other uh game stores as well if that matters to you um 24.99 100 recommended so yeah i guess we need to do admin wrap up and spoiler break so thank you for listening to the short game uh, we really appreciate you dropping by and we appreciate even more folks who take the time to leave us a review on your podcast platform of choice. That is a great way to support the show. Or if you really feel like supporting the show, you can give us money on Patreon. Uh, our show is at patreon.com slash the short game. And every one of our patrons gets a few nice perks. Uh, if you, uh, every one of our patrons gets access to our discord, which is where we talk about the show, plan things. If you want to talk about the forgotten city with us or ask us for tips or whatever, uh, join us there. Uh, and also every one of our patrons gets early access to episodes uh, with varying degrees of what is meant by early. But if that matters to you, you can get episodes 
up to several days early uh, by supporting us on Patreon. Uh, appreciate you. And if you come in at the $5 level, you get stickers. So there's that too. Uh, if you uh, want to find our show on the internet, we're at www.theshortgame.net, where you'll find all of our back catalog episodes. You'll find our contact form, great way of letting us know what you think or or telling us about games that you want to suggest. You can also find us on Twitter at underscore short game. And you can find me personally on Twitter at Reagan K. Uh, Shane, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at 8 Shane. And Rahul, do you have anything you want to plug, uh, social media or anything like that? Uh, yeah, um, follow me on Instagram at Coyote Bloodbath. That is where I will post any future shows or any new things that happen for my performance art stuff. And also, you can just see all my cool shit. I, I post funny memes. I have a lot of cool <laughs> tattoos. Yeah, it's awesome. tight. Awesome. And here it is, your spoiler break. These quests were some shit. <laughs> they were fucking great. Some this was good shit. Stuff. Welcome back to good Spoiler shit. Break. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, does anybody have any particular standout moments uh, that you thought were really cool Bruh, that we were uh, itching to talk about and couldn't spoil? Bruh, okay. Let us... I'm gonna I'm gonna just fucking gush from the beginning uh, how I felt about this Go for it. fucking shit. Okay, let's start. Let's start with uh, OG best waifu Sentia, Sentilla's Scintilla sister, who you first meet. <laughs> the very first time you have a conversation with her, you fuck it up, and it is uh, perhaps one of the best teaching moments in the game. That lets you know immediately you will fuck up conversations. Like there's no. There's no getting around it. You can fuck up how you talk to these people. Thank God there's a time loop for you, right? Otherwise, you'd be <laughs> a socially inept idiot because everyone remembers shit. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> watching her kind of just like talk about this thing and you also at, – right at the beginning of the game too when Galerius is like taking you up to the manor and then Horatius, uh, Horatio, whatever. Yeah, Horatius. He takes you in to meet the magistrate. Like um, seeing her just lounging on the couch, like you're naturally inclined based on – you know, I've been playing a bunch of Fallout New Vegas too. So like based on my sort of – knowledge of a first person rpg kind of thing you immediately want to be like oh, okay let's go snarky remark let's hit it and then you hit the snarky remark and then she tells you to fuck off and she doesn't want to talk to you anymore <laughs> <laughs> it's great it is wonderful man uh meeting <laughs> meeting uh sentius is really cool too and like mm -hmm. having the conversation about like oh fucking this is what uh, I know about your culture, and this is what I think about Rome, and these are the ways in which, like, I don't think Rome was very good. And you you mention the fact <laughs> that, like, oh, 2,000 years in the future, you know, uh, Rome Rome's stance on women was really fucking bad. And then he's like, it's not that bad. We're, we don't let them participate in politics, but they get lots of rights. And it, it was really strange, too. Uh, I have never – I have heard those arguments come out of, like, dipshit right-wing chuds a lot. But I don't think <laughs> I've ever heard them come out of, like, uh, an actual Roman – from Roman times. And I know this is a fictional character, but like hearing those sort of arguments and dialogues played out, uh, and especially with the acknowledgement yeah, that, that in particular, like I thought the conversation was particularly interesting talking about, um, collective punishment. Like that's yeah. a key, key function here in mm -hmm. the game. Right. And is, and like the, the whole story of the game is yeah, that Horatio are... brings it up. Like as you mm -hmm. walk up to talk to Sentius, Horatio, is like well, set, you're like well, what's he going to want to talk to me about? He's like well, he's going to talk to you about the golden rule, and you're like well, uh, what is it? And Horatio is like well, do you know what um, decimation? Decimation. Is? That's yeah. In oh yeah. The that's in the in the Roman army. That was how uh, if if there was a, a revolt brewing in the in the ranks, uh, they would just divide you into tens, and then you one out of every ten would be killed. It would be an easy way to deal with, you know, there would be no rebellion after that. It doesn't matter if we picked the right person. 
Yeah. Um, and shout so out to Legit Lanius that- from Fallout New Vegas. He does the same thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, he literally does the same thing. But yes. Yeah. I- I mean, they are literally also taking Roman culture, and, which is I, so fucked and you can up. Tell, and you can tell Sentius, like, well, where I come from, uh, collective punishment is a violation of the Geneva Convention. And he looks at you like, <laughs> what are you, some kind of idiot? Like, it, it's a really interesting conversation, but it, it also sort of uh, sets up that, like, you will have um, uh, philosophical conversations with characters here about the nature of sin. That's a hugely important uh, piece of this game because like these people are living under under uh you know a a, a, a threat that if any of them commits a sin mm-hmm. then they'll all be killed but yeah. none of them knows what that means so like uh you know sentius there's his people feeling from different on it is cultures like, too yeah right and there's even this there's this character that's like underground called the hermit philosopher i forget what his name really is no the, that's that's run. his name is the hermit philosopher yeah. and and he is explicitly a philosopher and will engage like there are a lot of characters in this game who will engage you in a fairly lengthy dialogue. Yeah, he'll do like, like total Socratic but method. He with will you. go he goes all in. On yeah. It. You can spend his dialogue is bi- I think maybe bigger than almost anyone else in the game. And it's mainly because he will have like a full on Socratic dialogue with you about the nature of the golden rule and of sin. And um I, this is what I really like about the writing of this game. It's also, I mean, it it's the fact that a it's really uh, well, at least seems at least very well researched. There's a lot of detail about Roman life and the Roman world, um, and then it's just very all in on the core philosophical issue of the game. Like this whole mystery hinges on the golden rule, and the golden rule is predicated on sin. And so the question of what is sin is constantly on the minds of all of these people and something that all of them have discussed extensively with each other. And a lot of them have different moralities. Like, what's the name of the guy that's the... the Desius. The There's, yeah. yeah. Desius totally just Fuck like... That guy. Oh, oh, oh so what's I find even like more interesting about that, right, is not only are people so concerned with what is a sin and what isn't a sin, they are also then thusly concerned with, well, how do I subsequently game the system of sinning? And, and everyone is trying to push the envelope. Yeah, yeah everyone. And, no one. And it's really interesting. And like things like, you know, there's there's a there's a really I thought really cool moment in the game where there's a character like about to commit suicide and everyone's really worried that suicide is a sin. And yeah. If he kills himself, are we all screwed? And then he does um, it and it's like, Oh, well fuck who cares? Well, I guess, I guess that's okay then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, it's so, um, uh, it, it, there, yeah, every, every potential angle on this. Yeah. There are actually two suicides. And- in this game? Yeah, there are. There is the uh, uh Yona or Yulia, Yulia as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She yeah. uh she tries to kill herself with the hemlock, man. Yeah, apparently suicides don't don't fucking break the golden rule. Yeah. And speaking of sin, both of them are committing suicide because they're in debt bondage. And so essentially like debt bondage and slavery are clearly totally okay. okay. Totally with okay. The golden rule. Um, because I guess they've gone into this willingly. There was a, they, they signed up for it. Yeah, they, 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 they signed up for even, it. So. Even though, even though they got into it by being scammed, essentially. And the scammers also didn't get zapped, right? So it, it's very interesting about like what it considers a sin. And like, why is this, is this world operating under what seems like a pretty unjust morality system being enforced by the golden rule is like a question that's with you through the whole game is like, I don't agree with the way this golden rule is being enforced, sir. And, uh, well, take it up with the God that put this in place. And so a big mystery of this game is like, okay, well, we know this is a curse from the gods, right? Because obviously it's magic. It has to be a curse from the gods, but which God is like a super important question to these people. And, um, um, it's a question that you like one of the central mysteries of the game that you get to solve. If if you've done the multiple time loops and if you've affected them, what uh, makes the time loops? What are the sins that cause it to go into the many shall suffer the sins of the one mode and you sure. have to reset the game? It's basically Be- two things. Uh, really, the the two the two th- the two rules that you can break is if you 
uh, throw a punch or make any kind of an attack on people. Like if you if you are violent in any way, or even just make a threat. So if you um, there there's a really cool moment where um, somebody I won't spoil who or if you take no, something it's, that we're in spoilers there. you can spoil the right fuck okay out of it. okay well so there's so um i, I guess uh sentius uh sentius at one point intentionally resets the time loop um by you know he he sort of he's mocking you at this moment and you know he's says of course i can i can i can end this anytime look and then he <laughs> looks at you and says i am going to kill you now and then boom <laughs> Those many will suffer many for the, sins, suffer of for the, the sins of the one. Sins of the one. And I loved it. I loved it because it's like it literally all it takes is for somebody to look at another person and say, I am going to kill you. And that's it. Um, so anything like that, a threat of violence is a sin. Now, but so many things we don't We haven't count. explicitly said what happens. Right. Yeah, because I, so what happens when which the is so broken, fucking funny <laughs> or was is, for me the first time it happened. Oh, it's, it's many super of hilarious. these statues come to life. So the the color drains out of the the, the world. Uh, this booming voice, uh, you know, says the motto of the city, the many of the many will suffer. And the statues start coming to life and with golden bows start shooting people. Everyone starts running and crying and screaming. Uh, but they're being hunted down by the golden statues, which is so much cooler than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was Me just going to be like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, um, we're just all going to like uh, Thanos snap into gold or some shit. Yeah. 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 But it, it it's also cool because it gives you a chance to see everyone panicking, seeing this happen. And also it gives you a chance to run away. And my favorite bit of this. So the first time this happened for me was like I mentioned earlier, like I was just wandering around Sentius's house and I accidentally took gold out of a chest while I was searching for clues or whatever. Right. Yep. <laughs> and in, and this is the first time this happened. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, oh, boy, it's you know, I'm going to turn to gold. Nope. It says the many shall suffer. The and then suddenly this like golden statue is like chasing me like the Terminator with a with a bow and arrow. And I'm like running. And the other thing then I notice, OK, my quest log is suddenly empty except for one quest that just says run. Yeah, run <laughs> and go and uh, the, access the, the portal. Again. You see like the the um you see the little quest tag, like the, the waypoint for Sentius just booking it across the map. And I realize, oh, he's running for the port. He's running to create the portal. So then I'm booking it trying to run back to the the temple of persepina trying to uh trying to get uh, out in time i i thought that is it's really fun when it happens it's like it, it's 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 silly but like it lets you do this like like top speed sprint and you get to know the layout of the um of the town yeah, enough that like that. being able to sprint to the exit is always kind of fun to do which i think is is really great this, this leads me to the first ending that i got which <laughs> Um, I, I don't, I think they all have names. This is what I would consider the fuck around and find out ending, uh, <laughs> where at a certain point in the game, you will acquire a bow, right? And so when I had the bow, I had triggered the time loop a few times. Like, of course, I'm going to trigger the time loop by shooting a random person to see what happens. Of course. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I mean, uh, to be honest, that's a I feel like that is an intended gameplay strategy, especially like when you fuck up when Plenty you fuck times up, you'll like, just reset stopping that uh, guy from fucking killing himself. I immediately like pulled out my bow and shot that woman and ran back to. the. Oh, start. for sure. <laughs> often, often, really, in, in most cases, the easiest way to reset time is to just murder the nearest person, which just is shoot kind someone. of fucked up. Just shoot um, someone or but, steal so, in front of them. Yeah, so I just dash, you know, yeah, so I just dashed, I hauled ass back to the to the temple, and I think it was maybe the second or third time I tried this, I got there before Sentius, and I would look, I was like, oh, the door's not open, where's Sentius? And he's still, like, running up, and I, I look back, and I see him running up, and I'm like, huh, fuck around and find out. So I shot him, and it yanks <laughs> me out. And it's like, you've just caused a paradox, because if Sentius never opens the time portal, then he ne then you never could have come into the city. And so because of that, uh, it bumps you out. And if you do it that way, uh, you find Al and you're both like in the city and he's like, oh, really? You time time loop? What? What happened? I never. Yeah, I just got down here. Yeah, let's get out of here. And he's like, oh, wait, shit. Yeah, we're fucking trapped in an underground city with no way out. So thanks. We're going to starve to death, asshole. Uh, 
<laughs> oh my god, dude! I gotta get that ending now. Holy shit, that's one. Yeah, it's the easiest ending to get, and it's it's super fun. Um, let's talk about the election because I think there's a lot to uh, there's a, yeah. well there's there's a couple of things we need to talk about the election and uh, the uh, the quest you get by investigating everyone's pasts and how they got there, and then I think yeah, the only there's and then there's so those are two things I know I want to chat about. Yeah, about the the um you know investigating everyone's past thing. That's probably the the first big revelation in the game and it was one that like I thought was really really well done and and cool. Like I was legitimately surprised even though I probably shouldn't have been because it seems sort of obvious from the beginning, but like the, you 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 get this quest from the um the priestess, the Vestal Virgin, who says, you know, I've uh I forget exactly how she phrases it, but she asks you to go and talk to all of the people in the town and learn how they came to be here. Yeah. And to kind look of for look that. for any commonality. <laughs> she well, so she's like, uh, we used to have someone in the town who was really talkative and she liked to know everyone and know everyone's stories. And right, then right. Uh, when she found out everyone's stories, she went crazy. <laughs> so why don't you do it too? Yeah. Um and that's really what was cool about this, because, like, uh, you do get to meet her later. That's Livia. Yeah. Um, Ooh, shit, yeah. So dude. we so what we learn is, you know, everyone's story basically all comes from the, the time, you know, one of the times when Rome burned to the ground and every everyone who here was affected by that uh, by that disaster. They all escaped to the river. All of their stories involve like a kind of a gap in their memory. Like they got knocked out or fell asleep um, near a river and all of them at least mention at some point that they had a coin on their possession. And so what we gather from all of this, when you talk to the priestess about it, she tells you like, you know, that she's kind of put this together and she was she was suspected it, but she kind of was waiting for you to confirm it that you're all dead and you're all in the underworld that everyone remembers a river. They all remember meeting a person. That person was probably Karen. In your case, you talked to Karen, right? Karen, this dude. This is so good. That was so it's funny. What's a- so funny? Yeah, so you can miss this, I think. You don't have to like engage in every dialogue option with Karen, but uh it's like the stranger by the uh, by the river. Yeah. Um oh, and my you, name's you ask Karen. her, she's like she's like I, she's like I don't want to tell you my name. <laughs> And it, I loved that. And then you're like, if you're like, you have to tell me your name if I'm doing a quest for you. Come on. And she's like, oh, well, it's Karen. People tend to have a bad reaction. And, and you're like, because of the memes? Yeah. The, <laughs> the, the option. Oh, the, because of the memes, right? I can totally understand how that would get to you. After yeah. You're, there, you're are some, clearly... there are several places in this game, by the way, where uh, you have some throwaway dialogue option where you talk about like dumb memes with an ancient Roman. And every time it happens, it's fucking delightful. Yeah. It, it's also like, it's clear you're coming from 2020 because uh, there's also moments where like, you know, you're talking about morality and, and you know how, uh, you know, it, one of the really crazy things about the golden rule is you have to rely for your very survival on everyone else around you, not being an idiot. And then one of your dialogue options is something like, I know I lived through a pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. And what's, what's even wilder about that is the moment you answer with that, the guy is like, Oh man, then you totally know already because the Romans (laughs) had to fucking deal with that. Yeah. (laughs) So wonderful. Can I also say the, uh, the accurate representation of ancient Christians, ancient christian cultists is Mm -hmm. i think real solid real historically accurate i love that that's probably one of the biggest selling points about this game is that it is wildly historically accurate i i I mean i'm not a historian so i don't know for sure but i do hope so and i did look up some information about this and obviously this is a small team but at some point during uh during development they did work with a couple of uh of you know phds basically to uh um to to get the uh historically accurate stuff um so they worked with some historical consultants they list their names here on the page and um, you know, one of them was uh, like a person who spent a lot of time uh, excavating Pompeii. Another one is some kind of a, a professor at Oxford or, or PhD from Oxford and teaches at Cambridge. Um, you know, like they, they got some like really in the know people to kind of do a pass over all of their art and architecture yeah. and other stuff. And I'm sure that there's there's stuff in this that is not historically accurate because, hey, you know, it's a video game no, and yeah. they wanted to like, be fun. There's no but, like, they magical cared. golden bow. There's no, like, crazy golden skeleton things. Uh, there's no <laughs> weird time loop shit. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, the liberties were taken. But 
what is very telling. The devil's in the details about this man. It's from the beginning, Sentius lets you know that he is like, I am basing this off of Roman society. This is the only way that we as a people can understand what sin is and how we kind of track sin and at least keeps everyone in yeah, check. Yeah, we follow the laws of the Empire. Even though, realistically, from gameplay, all, the only things that cause the thing are stealing or killing someone, attacking someone. Rahul, do you want to bring up the... I think you said something you wanted to say about Livia. Oh, dude. Uh, well, yeah, she is my favorite character in this game. Her and, like... uh Navia are probably my favorite characters in the game. Navia is like the weird surgeon who is in the uh, house who ends up mm. like doing the surgery on all of the golden statues because they're whispering to her. Man, love love her character arc. Like how the entire thing is predicated. Her only reason for freaking out is because you walk into her house and then at the end of it, you are just like, hey, I know how to reset time. I won't have done this in another time loop. You don't have to worry about me. Just give me the info that I need. But, uh, totally. yeah, tell me how to treat this fucking rheumatism, right? But, yeah, <laughs> uh, Olivia is – okay, so the entire – up until, like, a certain point in the game, right? Let's say you haven't decided to talk to your Vestal Virgin, Equatia. And you've just been, like, keeping it to the political people and then the people in the marketplace, right? Um, and you'll see Olivia, and she's around town, and she's a homeless person, and no one really talks to her at all. Uh, and they, she has the creepiest stuff to say. Yeah, she's just muttering she constantly. Just constantly just, like, saying some real wild shit, right? And so then you talk to Equestria, uh, Equestria. Uh, horse girl, whatever. <laughs> uh, so you talk to the priestess, and she tells you that, oh, Livia used to be this person who was super chill, and she liked to talk to people. And then she found out everyone's story, and she became that person, right? But then, after connecting all the dots, uh, you realize that, like, Livia has been trying to cope with the fact that like she is okay we'll say it we'll spoil it now she we are in hell we are in the underworld right. and everyone has died the fact that everyone showed up at a river and was taken a coin and met someone named Charon or in uh Kabosh's term like Ket or like a death god who crosses the river and sends him to the city um Everyone here is dead. And then you end up talking to Livia and you confront her about the information you have. And she's like, I, I thought I was the only person who knew. And like you, in perhaps one of the most heartbreaking fucking moments, you get to speak to her normally. And she's just like, I, after I found out, I was just so afraid and I'm not sure what to do anymore. Oh, it was beautiful. Loved she's great, it. yeah. And everything she's been saying, all of her crazy mutterings, are just from uh, from poet the poetry of Ovid. Yeah, uh, they're, writing about it's the like underworld. All, it's like it's just the, the bits of Ovid she can remember. It from is the, all uh, the descriptions of the underworld. So it's all specifically yeah. from uh, the tale of Orpheus that Ovid wrote, and it's all yeah, it is all Orpheus uh, describing uh, people in the underworld. It's super. It's real dope, and it's like as you. You come to find out these weird ramblings and mutterings are her personal like mantra to keep her sane and let her know that like this is not the thing that we are supposed to do uh we are not supposed to simply find ourselves in this new place and go about our lives like our past lives we, we cannot revel in our trades and replay them out again and again uh it was it that moment when i when you go and talk to her is like a fucking one of the best moments for me. And obviously voice acting fucking takes this up a notch. But yeah, having her, her performance was really, really solid. Like, I, I mean, all of the voice acting in this game is pretty good. Uh, like Chef's kiss. Like n there's no really bad voice acting in this, in my opinion. And uh, but she's maybe the best performance. And it's hard. It's hard to do like crazy convincingly. But she's like she's she's good. Um, really good performances. 
yeah, I don't know what uh, what else there is to really talk about that wouldn't like we did decide kind of not to spoil the very final. There's four endings to this game. Mm-hmm. The fourth ending uh, is some wild shit. And I'll leave that uh, off of this episode uh, oh, as an exercise. Cool. Yeah, it, but hey, it's a really you. good ending. But yeah, like everything in this man is very good. I, I loved the characters. I, lo- I think it's really, really expertly plotted. You can tell mm-hmm. that this is like the third or fourth draft of of this you know narrative right that they've really thought it through and you know this is the product of like years of work and really really smart people working on this so yeah. i'm oh, so impressed. all the philosophical stuff pays off like you mm-hmm. will confront the author of the golden rule and you'll have a chance to put all the questions that you might have about the morality yeah. of it to him and mm-hmm. debate it with him and uh you know, maybe maybe fuck him over if you want. Damn, there's a lot some choices there at the end. So man, we didn't even. That's all awesome. <laughs> we didn't even talk about Maliolus and like the whole rest <laughs> of the Maliolus for a second. Let's shit. talk about the election, okay? Because the election is one of the the pivotal elements that you really can that has like it's a it's a situation with multiple. Yeah, multiple if you items. if you don't like, let's say you're going through the game and you don't find out who is going to break the golden rule, the golden rule will be broken at the election. Like right. Yeah. Yeah. So by by nightfall the election happens, all of the vote having, you know, basically men in the city come together and um Sentius, the current uh, magistrate is uh, uh I think if you don't do anything Going I think out. it's in a tie. But that uh, the tie goes to Sentius as the incumbent, um, but Maliolus uh, wants to, you know, take over anyway. And so uh, his gladiator guy, whose name is escaping me, um, makes a threat against Sentius, and that triggers the golden rule and everybody dies. That's the that's the sort of if you don't touch anything, that's where it happens. Um, but yeah, you can if you want. Uh, threaten Maliolus so that he withdraws his name, in which case Sentius just wins by default and there is no election. Um, or if you've uh, gotten Galerius uh, super, super popular, then he'll stand against uh, Sentius uh, for the election. But yeah. it still goes to a tie at that point. Um, and so if you want Galerius to win, you have to bribe some... Well, I, there might be more than one way to get somebody to shift their vote, but the way that I ended up doing it was bribing that one dude, um, the the squirrely guy, um, to Dead. get him to change his vote. Because you can just give him money. And money is you yeah. know, money is meaningless in this game where you can uh, you can eventually, if you figure out where everyone keeps their money, like you can just go into, um, for example, like Maliolus' uh, oh, villa... Yeah. Steal two thousand five hundred uh, sesterces and book it for the exit, and do that a couple of times if you want. So yeah, there's there's a I'll, I'll mention for you know for that tip. There's on your way back to the exit. There's a place where like a uh, a golden statue is blocking a door, but once the rule is broken, that statue starts to walk, and behind that door, there's a chest with a shit ton of money in it. So you're basically set at that point. Um, the the way that I got. Uh, Galerius elected is basically like almost all you really have to all you have to do is uh, get Maliolus out of the election and then um, solve have have Galerius solve every problem in the city because th- this is where that that uh, element of him being your like gopher has its I like, wonder if I missed payoff. one then because when I solved all the problems in the city that only brought it to a tie did you actually get okay. it to just go through uh yeah i had four i had four tasks for him i don't know if you had three or i think i had four i wonder i don't know i wonder what i what i must have missed but yeah every time i did it it would would result in a tie and then i had to bribe someone there there's multiple possible outcomes um and then um i'll just say that uh at the very end of the game and i won't spoil anything past the the uh, the final quest line getting into the uh, there, there is a final quest that involves confronting the author of the uh of the golden rule. And that quest starts with you first figuring out that you are in the underworld, as we've said, then collecting a series of tablets for the kind of temple that's at the very top of the, uh, of the city. And once you do and restore this kind of pillar that's there with the four, the four tablets that belong on it, then you're able to go in and, and uh, confront the, uh, confront the God. It's great. It's really. Good. I thought it was a really, really good ending. Um, but all of the endings were fun to get, even the ones where you know things end in absolute disaster. So, I really love this game. 
I'm uh, super glad that we got to cover it for the show. Um, uh, I know we talked about this at the top, but it's a, it's a PC. It's coming to Xbox and PlayStation. I just checked and they don't have dates on that yet, but it is still happening. Uh, they've definitely announced that it will. And uh, go check this out. Go yeah. Play it. And uh, thanks again for, for the rec and for coming on, Rahul. It's very cool to uh, oh, yeah, no drop problem. in on, on the show. I uh, I have, man, we, if you want to talk about games that are long, we can talk about those. <laughs> no, go away. Uh, sorry. <laughs> we no. don't do that here. <laughs> uh, well, if you want to talk about games that are short, let me, uh, let me check my Steam library. Maybe I got something <laughs> for you. We can talk right. about Hades again. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Yeah, that game is great. <laughs> but yeah, hey, no problem. I, I really appreciate it. I had a good time. I've been wanting to chat about this game for fucking a minute with some people who have played it. So yeah, I really appreciate yeah. it. It rules. So yeah, go check it out. And um, we'll leave it here. So listeners, you've already heard all the admin and outro. Thank you very much for, for joining us on this episode of The Short Game. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Bye.